What's going on, my wild gamers? Today I'm going to show you how to set up your R4 card, your R4 Revolutions card, for your NDS or your NDS Lite in 2024. So let's jump in and level up our gaming knowledge. All right, mobile gamers. So this setup guide is specifically for this R4 card right here that says R4 Upgrade Revolution for DS. It also says NDS L and NDS at the bottom. Ignore that Wi-Fi symbol. The Wi-Fi symbol doesn't really matter if it looks like this card and loads just like this card does. Now, if you have a card that says R4 card upgrade revolution for ds doesn't have the wi-fi symbol it'll still work it just has to be the one that's for the ds and the ds Lite, just like i have right here and yes this only works for these two consoles it does not work for a 3ds if you have the r4 card for the 3ds that looks like this card then you have to get your different kernel or different files for that card i don't have that card i'm not doing a video about that card and i'm not going to search out for that card because there's better cards out there some people can't find those better cards, so these are the only cards that they have the option for. This card can only go up to 32 gigabytes for a micro SD card. I have a 32 gig, a 16 gig, and a 2 gigabyte. I'm going to be working with my 32 gigabyte Lexar today, but it does work for these other cards. If you want to watch to the end of this video and see these other cards being used and popped in, I did a little bonus section to show that. But I'm just going to put these off to the side. We're going to be working with this card right here. Now, I'm going to plug this into my computer. And the next thing we're going to do is download the files in the link in the description below. It's just one zip file. I put everything together for you to make it easy. You're going to right click that zip file. You're going to extract all the files into your downloads folder, just like so. Just to make it simple, straightforward, straight to the point. So you don't have to jump through hoops. You're welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. As we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers, and I have done a lot of stuff in regards to the R4 card for you guys to play on your DS and DS Lite and 3DS and other consoles that are in the DS family. Yes, a lot of these R4 cards work for most DSs if there are the clones. Not this one, though. This one only works for the DS. Now, back to this R4 card specifically. Now that we've extracted these files, we're going to navigate inside these folders right here. Keep going, keep going until you see a folder that says 32 gigabyte or below formatting tool. Go inside that folder, go to the SD format tool folder, and then double click on the SD formatter.exe file. This is going to allow us to format our SD card. Now you can use the generic formatting tool that is built into the Windows operating system, but this one works perfectly fine. So let's format that card. Click OK. Wait for it to format. This is going to format it to FAT32 like it's supposed to. Click OK. Click Exit. Now we have that card formatted. On the left hand side you'll see the USB drive F. Now we're going to navigate back out into that R4 card where it says R4 files. We're going to go inside there. We're going to grab all these files, control C or right click and click on the copy icon just like so. Navigate to the USB drive F and click paste, which is control V. Or you can right click and then just push the paste icon. Now that all those files are pasted, we're going to pull this SD card out and we're going to pop it back into our R4 card. I'm going to be using the DS Lite for the sake of this video. It does work for the DS as well. So just make sure if you're using a different console than what I'm using in this video, make sure your SD card slot is clean because sometimes or your game cart slot is clean because sometimes the game cart does not read. Now you're going to be presented with this menu. Select your language. I'm going to just select the language as my GUI, which is just my systems UI. Now I'm going to select my region. My region is going to be USA. And let this menu load. This is called Twilight Menu. This is the best menu because it is set up really nice. It has the ability to play games like Pokemon Emerald. Play games that you wouldn't be able to play normally. Which brings me to my next point. You cannot play every single game 
in regards to emulators. You cannot play hacked ROMs either for NDS games, as I've noticed a lot of people have complained about that. I even tested some hacked ROMs and they do not work. Now, I like to clean this menu up a bit. I'm going to click X on Twilight menu. Wait for this little menu to pop up at the bottom. And then I'm going to click Y. This is going to hide these icons. The only icons I want to see is the ROMs and the applications folder. So we're going to do this with all of these. And it's up to you how you do this. But this is how I'm going to do it. Now, we don't have any ROMs on here yet. But you're going to notice that you're going to see a whole bunch of ROM folders right here. Which brings me to my next step. We're going to have to unplug this from our device and plug it back into our computer and copy a whole bunch of games, which is what I'm going to do. Now, Sega Genesis games. You need to listen to this part clearly. We're going to navigate into our file manager. Now we're going to go into ROMs. We're going to go into the gen folder and we're going to place our Sega game in here. Now I have a Sonic and Knuckles game that is a bin file that I'm going to paste in here. You have to right click on that file, rename the .bin part to .gen, just like so. Click yes. Now you'll be able to play that game using this R4 card. SNES games. You need to place all your SNES games in here, which is your Super Nintendo. Now again, not every game is going to play. I'm going to use Super Mario World for this example. Super Mario Kart does not seem to want to load. And some other games don't load as well, so don't expect every game to run. GBA games. If you've done everything correctly, the first game I always test is Pokemon Emerald. Because Pokemon Emerald does not work on some other versions of the kernels. So like the original kernel file using the GBA runner. So use this kernel, which is the Twilight menu, for your R4 card. NDS games. I'm going to use Super Mario Bros just to make it simple. And you can save all your saves inside of a saves folder. Now this automatically saves these saves into this folder no matter what. Now that we've added some of those games, I'm not going to show you any other ones because Game Boy works fine. Uh, NES works fine. Again, NES is one of those ones that doesn't work every game, but it works a lot of the games. Now we're going to navigate and pop this back into our DS Lite. All right, so go over to ROMs. I'm going to load up Game Boy Advance first. There we go. Pokemon Emerald and see if it loads. And there we go. We have it. We have Pokemon Emerald loading right up. And we can continue where we left off if you have any game saves. Otherwise, just start playing the game as you would normally. Now to exit games, you still have to turn off the device. Or if you want to navigate out of GBA Runner, for example, you can go to your Quit to ROM Browser section on the bottom here. Go to ROMs, go to GBA, and select a game. Now, not every game is going to work that way. You usually have to just turn it off and turn it back on. Sometimes it crashes. It depends on the game that you were playing before. So that is a very important note to take in note. I'm going to load up Sega games now, just to show you that Switching that game file to a .gen file makes it runnable. Click back. We're going to go to GEN. Sonic and Knuckles. Now this is going to load up our homebrew application, which is an emulator. We have to go to ROMs. Go to GEN. And then go to Sonic and Knuckles.gen. Now, I think this game looks okay. You're going to notice some graphical issues with some games, and I don't really care that much about that, just because of the fact that we are trying to play games from a console perspective on a smaller screen. You can mess around with the settings for all this stuff, but I just leave it the way it is. Like, as you can see on the left-hand side, the game just doesn't render properly. It's cutting off some of the screen, but... I think it looks fine to me, and the fact that it's playable is really, really cool. Now, exiting games like this again, we have to close the game and then go back in. All right, loading DS games for the very first time. We're going to go to our NDS folder. We're going to open up Super Mario Bros. Now, the game is going to take a few minutes to load for the very first time, but just let it run. Don't 
get too antsy and close it. Just let this page run and let it do its thing. It does take a couple minutes. This only happens for the very first run. And then when you navigate to other games, this doesn't load up again like this. What this is doing is just setting up uh, Bootstrap, which is part of the Twilight menu to be able to navigate through our NDS games. And there we have it. Now, to navigate out of games, click your L button, your down, and your select. This will open up a little menu at the bottom of the screen, as you can see there. And then you can navigate and go to quick game. Now, some games like Pokemon, for example, will crash this. So you still have to exit the game by closing the game out and or turning the system off and turning it back on. This game, however, lets you do that. It doesn't crash or anything, and it works perfectly fine. Accessing cheats. We're going to press the Y button on the game. We're going to click the X icon. Now, this part's very important. You need to make sure that you click A on the must be on. That means that we have activated the cheats to be on when we actually go into the game. Now, Game Enhancer Codes is one of them, the ones that I like to put on for this game because it skips the intro rather than having to wait through it. So press A, click B. Now there's other option codes here. There's unlock all codes, unlock all worlds, play as Luigi. So I'm going to play as Luigi. Now that I want to save that, I need to press the X button to make sure that that saves and that cheat is active. And as you can see, cheat number one has been disabled, which skips the intro so that we don't have to wait for that intro. All right, now that's about it for setting up your R4 card for your NDS or your DSL in 2024. You don't have to do anything fancy. You don't have to do anything spectacular. You just have to copy those files. Again, this works for any cards that are under 32 gigabytes. Not every game's going to work. Again, some games work great. Some games have some graphic issues. But you're able to set up your R4 card and play a lot of games that you wouldn't be able to normally play on your DS or DS Lite using the R4 Revolution card. Have a nice day. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe for more mobile gaming content.